I'm Kristen Chusmith. I'm the medical uh, director of the London Health Sciences Centre ALS Clinic. I have a few other roles though. I also uh, sit on the Client Service, uh, Services Advisory Council Committee of ALS Canada. Um, I do clinical research in ALS and I'm also the chair of the ALS Best Practice Recommendations. In Canada we really feel that it's important that each patient, no matter whether or not they live in um, Nova Scotia versus um, Quebec or BC, all get the same type of care and that they have the same access to that type of care. Best practices are extremely important for advocacy for our patients um, and establishing what is a standard of care across the country. Um, without practice guidelines in place, um, there may be inconsistencies about patient care across the, the um, country or between provinces, um, that it's very difficult to decide what is the um, best uh, which province is doing the best. And so if we have a standard um, set between the provinces, it's very easy to say a province is not providing the best care to their patients because they're not meeting the standard that we have set. And so providing these best practice recommendations will allow us to know exactly what is the standard and what is the, the measure at which all the clinics should be measured and all the patient care should be measured against. Um, so that will help in both providing excellent care to the patients because the patients deserve to have the best and most appropriate care for their disease, but also to advocate to make sure that they have the resources in place to have that best care. Setting a uh, baseline will make sure that patients get that um, standard of care for their, for their disease. The other thing is it also speaks to the ability to change and that we need to have a process that we can adapt and uh, continually review to make sure that we don't need to make changes um, as things change. Right now we only have a single medication that is approved by Health Canada, uh, but having a guidelines process in place and a group of people that look at the guidelines regularly will make sure that if there is a new medication that is introduced that we can adapt that quickly and so that we can make sure we advocate for our patients to get new treatments as they become available. Um, one of the big things that we've got within our provinces is that we do have a rural versus urban distribution. Um, and so these guidelines will also make sure that those patients that live in northern communities that may be uh, remote from some of the ALS centers will get the same type of care. Because um, even if that patient is unable to travel to the center because of the geographical distance, their physicians in their local center will know what the standard of care is so that they can try their best to provide that standard of care for the patient in their local community. So we have a number of ALS clinicians across the country that have been involved. Uh, we try to do our best to have a geographical representation of clinics across the country. So we have someone uh, from Nova Scotia, um, from uh, New Brunswick, all the way over to uh, Alberta. Um, so we do have a, a large representation. Um, they are all um, ALS clinicians in clinics. So they're either the director of the clinic or a, a physician that works in the ALS clinic. And at this time we have nine um, active uh, clinicians on the committee that are working at these guidelines. These guidelines are based on our real life experience with how we treat patients and how we manage those patients in our clinics. We are very, very thankful that ALS Canada has decided this is a very important endeavor and they've recognized that fact for the last few years and they have supported our project. And we are very grateful for their support because without it, the guidelines would not have been produced.